Hey everybody, welcome to today's training. This is TJ with ShopBot Tools, and today's topic is going to be slotted material holiday tree. And what's really neat about this design here is you can use different material thicknesses, and you're able to scale the vectors for the material thickness and for the size of the tree that you want. And then with just a little bit of snipping and joining of the vectors and the in the uh, Vectric software here, you'll be able to add your dog bones and then slot these together. And what's nice about these trees here is they're able to be scaled from small to medium to large and make it very decorative. So let's go ahead and get started with today's training. So we'll start by looking at our Vectric drawing file here and Bill Young put this together for us. It has a nice set of instructions and then if we look down here at the vectors for the three tree pieces what's really nice about this is it has one center line going down the middle of these and what we'll do in today's tutorial is work through offsetting those slots by not only our material thickness but also multiplying that by the cosine for 30 degrees so when these three tree sl slices get put together the way it stands up is you have your 30 degree increments between all the different tree slices. So let's go through setting this up for our first example, which we will demo on a ShopBot desktop. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up here to the job setup and set this up for our desktop, which has 24 inches in the X, it has 18 inches in the Y, and the material thickness that we're using right now is actually 0.26 with the calipers, and this is cut out of uh, color core HDPE so you'll see this is a red white red color combination and I zeroed to the material surface for this example and I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and we follow through the instructions here where it's now telling us to scale our work to the size that we want so we do that before we even do the slots if we were to we put our slot thickness in there at this point what would happen when we go to scale it is we would lose the thickness so we're not worried about slot thickness yet right now we're just worried about the height of this tree so I'm going to center these in my material and I notice that with the spacing that I currently have these aren't going to fit so let's see if I can just, you know, maneuver these around a little bit. I can mirror my objects. I can do them vertically, mirror that. I can hover over these guys and bring them in. And for this first example, this is all that I did was by eye. I, I just brought the ones that came in by default. Let me pan in a little bit here so we can see. Close out at this. And I'm just leaving a little bit of a border here. Obviously got a good border around on the edges for hold down. This one here, whether you have a vacuum, it gives you a nice border around for your vacuum, or this has got space for screws. And this is just good here. So if we went back up to the instructions, it's going to tell us next that uh, accurately measure our material thickness. We did that in the job setup. And then multiply that thickness by the cosine, uh, which is given right here, which is your 0.866. So I need to bring up the calculator for this next step. And what it says here is multiply the thickness by the, the 0.866. So that stays consistent. The cosine of 30 degrees doesn't change. And that's just adding the three, this is where you're finding that by the angle of these three slots when they go together. But what does change is your material thickness. So what we want to add in right now is our material thickness, which was our 0.26. So whatever your material thickness would be, is this is where it would change. And you don't need to add a tolerance. There'll be enough with the slots when it gets cut. So your material thickness times the 0 0.866, 0 0.866, and that gives you our 0.225, which is going to be, which was the distance that we offset in both directions. So again, the cosine, the 30 degree part, that doesn't change. So this 0.866 is always going to be what you multiply your material thickness by. So Bill did a good job putting these simple directions together. And if you follow through these, it's going to work every time. So 0.225 is where we need to go and offset our vectors. OK, remember the 0.225. Come down here to the offset. And we want to go offset in both directions. And we want to offset that by 0.225. 
And what we will do for this is zoom down in here. Again, it said the red line in both directions. And just to save me a step from having to delete my center line later, I don't, I'm not going to need that again. I'm going to snip away all these lines. I'm actually going to click on Delete Original. So it will delete that red line as it offsets both directions, 0.225. So let me go ahead and click on all the red lines. And then what we'll have to do after this is just a little bit of trimming. And a lot of people look at this right now and go, wow, that slot is really pretty large because we're going in both directions. But remember, what we're doing on this is we're not just sliding together two pieces of wood. We're sliding together three. So that's why we have that larger slot. So there we went ahead and offset our different slots and got them to the thickness that we need. We can close out of that. And the next step that it has us do is it actually has us trim the vectors now because uh, right now we just have individual vectors, individual lines for the slots and individual vectors for the tree. So we need to join these, snip these and join these. We will do this by using the interactive trim tool, which is the little scissors right here. If you hover over them, it tells you what they are. I'll grab the scissors and to save you another step, instead of having to go and join all the vectors after you snip them, is make sure this is checked here where it says rejoin trim vectors. So when you go in here and do the snipping, it's actually snipping the vector that you don't want away and it's joining those two points. So I will use my center scroll wheel on my mouse which lets me zoom in and pan and I just have to go around here and snip these different vectors away. Zoom in, zoom out. It's a lot of moving around, but in doing so, I'm getting all of my vectors to be joined to the slot that I need. And yet there is a th pretty thin spot right there, but that's okay. It, there's enough material left there that the tree looks great when it's cut. And again, I'm just trimming away what I don't need. And Bill sure made this easy for us. We just do a little offsetting, a little trimming. And I hit close out of there. And what I can do right now is by clicking on each one of these individually, I can see that they've already been snipped and joined, and they've become one vector all the way around. And if you just want to make sure that these are joined, you can click on the Join Vector command over here, sweep select all of your vectors, and you can see that you do have three closed vectors. And you're ready to move on to tool pathing. So I'll switch over to tool path tab. And one thing I like to do, because I'm going to show you the video here, we're actually hold this down with some screws into the spoil board, is I'm going to, before I go into tool pathing, I'm actually going to go back over to the drawing tab one more time, grab the draw circle command, and I'm going to have a diameter of quarter inch, which is approximately the diameter of a drywall screw head. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put some screw some circles in areas where I'm going to put screws for hold down. And you'll see this out on the material. And I'm just doing this, I'm estimating by eye where I want these. And I'm doing it where I know it's far enough away from the vector that my bit's not going to hit it. I could measure it if I need to, but I know that I'm going to cut this out with an eighth inch bit as long as I stay within an eighth of without side of an eighth of an inch of this these will be safe spots so what you'll see here now is I'm going to go over here and tool path this where I will create a hold down tool path and then a profile tool path for these vectors and then we'll go out to the shop bot and see this cut okay so the first one is I like to do a drilling tool path just give it a small cut depth 0.04 just something that's going to cut into the surface a little bit to give me a layout location and then the eighth inch straight is the bit that we're using I'm going to make sure it's the one underneath plastic that I chose because that's what we're going to be cutting and for this one here I'm just going to do a s selection of the screw heads just using my sweep select by holding the shift key down and what we're going to do is eighth inch straight and I'm going to call this toolpath hold down and calculate it when we go into our preview here we can see that it's just going to hit those eight spots so I'm good with that go back to my 2d view back to the tool path and then the last one that we want to do is a profile tool path so I'm going to go ahead and do a sweep select grab those three vectors which are our three trees for the material thickness up here 
uh, that we said our material thickness was 0.26 and I like to cut just a little bit deeper down into my sacrificial board that way depending on how I zeroed my uh, material if I didn't get it in the right you know there's always going to be material discrepancies and thicknesses so I'm going to add just a little bit of extra tolerance to cut a little bit deeper into the sacrificial board that's not too much it's point, point oh 0.02 and we'll have that for our cut depth. I want to cut on the outside of these vectors. I want to make sure I have that same plastic eighth of an inch straight. And again, you mess with the feeds and speeds of what material it is that you're working with. You want to add tabs to keep the, the parts from moving when they're done. If you'd like to add a ramp for harder material, again, if you want to get into profile tool paths, I'd recommend watching one of the tutorials on setting up the perfect profile tool path uh, but for this we'll call this tree profile <clears throat> and you can see I, I used a ramp uh, in the video out here we'll calculate that it is giving me a warning message saying you will be cutting into your sacrificial board through your material are you okay with it? I see that the thickness difference is, is 0 0.02 I am okay with that and then I can preview this here and I can see the three trees I could even set it up for the material that we're about to go cut which we were gonna cut out of red HDPE and I can see I left the tabs off in this preview just so when I can click on that my waste goes away and what I can see now is this all looks good and everything but what is so nice about going into 3D preview is it helps me catch where I might have forgot something. And that's going to be our job right now to see what did we forget. And what we did forget was to add a dog bone or a T-bone. And even though we used a small eighth of an inch radius of a bit, that little, little radius that we have right there isn't going to allow those slots to perfectly seat flat on that flat edge with each other so we need to go back and add a dog bone or a t-bone so that's what's nice about this 3d preview is it helps catch some of the things that you might have forgot it's an easy enough fix by just switching back to 2d view I'm gonna close this and switch back to the drawing side your dog bones and t-bones are found underneath your fillet command uh, since we're using a eighth of an inch bit the tool radius is just half the diameter is 0.0625 Personally, preference here, I like to use a T-bone because then I can zoom in here and I can put the T-bone up on the slot. So when the projects get slotted together, they actually hide the T-bones. Whereas if it was out on the edge like this, you could still see that little bit of a cutout when the project gets slotted together. So I'm going to go ahead and yes, it is two clicks for every slot where you want to use them. If you have a project down the road where you have a lot of dog bones or t-bones that you need to add, so I'm talking like say you had a hundred of them or so where you didn't want to click on them all, you could add them ahead before you copy and paste or you could use the gadget for the t-bone and you can see more about that underneath about gadgets where there's the auto dog bone and t-bone gadget. But get back going here, what we need to do, we added our dog bones, we need to recalculate the tool path by clicking on the little calculator. It did recalculate. I am going to go into 2D, 3D preview here, reset my preview, and before I even hit preview all tool paths, I can zoom in and see the little bit where it goes up here for the dog bones. So I can see that it's been added there. Great. So the way I would save this out now to run this out on the shop bot is I'd save it as two different files. I wouldn't want to have both of these saved together when I go and save my toolpath. Because what's going to happen having both of these together as one saved toolpath is it's going to get done running the hole down and then immediately it's going to start running the tree profile. Well that will not give me enough time to put my screws in place. So I'm going to save these as two separate files. So hold down, saved, save toolpath to file, and this is where I will call that my hold down and I like to take any spaces out of there hold down tree point two six so I knew what thickness material this is I will save that one and then I will also save this one here where it's pr tree profile take the space out of there and point two six so I know which material thickness tree profile it is that I'm cutting 
So I've saved those as two separate files. And here we'll see out on the shop bot why we did that as two separate files. So we could see on the ShopBot desktop here, we've just taken our 0.26 material and it's just placed on the ShopBot. It's not actually held down right now. We did set it up where we zeroed our Z to the top of the material in this example. And then we're running the hold down file. We see it's just going and nipping the surface just a little bit. It's just giving me enough of, of a dimple in that material where I can see where that was a safe spot to run my screw head in. And I could see back in the V-Carve preview that that wasn't an area where I was going to have my bit. So then I'll go ahead and run the different screws in place hold it down since it's the same bit I don't need to re-zero anything and now I would just go back to my ShopBot control software and run the the tree file so here you can see it's starting to cut the the profile out of the tree you can see that the screws where it might look scary where it's close but in the drawing file I could see that 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 screw head was far enough away from the profile of that tree so that's a nice way to get a hold down if you don't have a vacuum table and get your screws in areas that are close to your material you could see it did the dog bone on the top of the slot and here it is it's doing it in multiple passes I like to do multiple passes with that little eighth inch bit those bits are great bits the, you know HDPE is a pretty soft material but again I'm just cutting a couple Christmas trees out I'm not trying to set any world records here for speed and it's getting through in a nice edge quality and I'm not breaking bits and everything's coming out great so you can see the hold down method you can see the dog bones added in the tree slot and you can see why the slots are a little bit larger it's because that we have the the three pieces that are going to go together for your slot so bring them out blow them out if you need to clean up the tabs on the edges you can see here just take the bottom one and then take the one with the two slots and then finally the one with the slot on the bottom that goes down on it and there you go you've got yourself a slotted together Christmas tree that has three different pieces to it so using this method of scaling vectors and using the material thickness slotting, you can take this tree and make lots of different versions of it, different thickness. Here's 0.18, and then here's one that was even scaled up to do a 7 foot tall tree. And included in this one here are different cutouts where you can hang ornaments and holes for hanging the string that holds the ornaments so again it would just be no matter the size of the tree big or small you go through these steps the key is multiplying by the cosine 30 degrees which that number stays consistent you just multiply your material thickness do the math do the offsetting do the snipping and then what you're looking at here is again just different sized trees using the same method and then if you go to cut the larger one out, you could also use your shop bot and several different other materials and decorate the tree. You can see we even made wood garland, different ornaments. We even have decorations sitting around the tree. So just something to think about to add in for other projects to make a complete festive project with your slot together tree and other items. I want to thank you for choosing ShopBot and also joining our tutorial training today. Really appreciate it and working with everyone. And just a quick thing here on our website, you know, we do have lots of other trainings available here. We do have some ready to go downloadable projects. I'd recommend getting signed up for our newsletter. If that's something you haven't already done, come one time a month. Some nice success stories of what people are doing, what's new going on at ShopBot, what's new with Vectric and that's a nice read also people that haven't explored yet get up here on our shopbot forum it's full of some wonderful people that have a lot of great tips and tricks and show and tell of projects so i hope you enjoyed today's training and we hope to see you again at the next one so thanks everyone have a happy holiday season and we'll see you here next time